perfect. Audio works. Terribly sorry if I bottom out G or something. Um, okay. So this is going to be what assigned question 4 from chapter 6. Uh, a bullet of mass M is fired horizontally into a wooden block of mass big M lying on a table. The bullet remains in the block after the collision. The coefficient of friction between the block and the table is mu, and the block slides a distance d before stopping. Find the initial velocity v0 of the bullet in terms of m, big M, little m, mu, g, and d. Okay? So, let's go through our steps. If you want me to write out the, the, the text version of these, I totally can, but I, I think it's faster just to not. I, I can, not a big deal. It takes me like an extra 30 seconds when I'm prepping the video. Um, but step one, step one is writing what we know. So we know we have a little m, we have a big m, we have a velocity initial, right? Sorry, my bad, we don't have a velocity initial. Uh, we have mu, we have gravity, we have distance, right? Those are the constants that they told us to work with, right there, right? Um, and they kind of just define out those constants. Part two is... Uh, important information from the question. Okay, important information from the question. This right here, the bullet remains in the block after the collision. Okay, that means we're not dealing with an elastic collision. We're dealing with an inelastic collision. In an inelastic collision, kinetic energies are not equal in the in initial and final. Okay, and the only way to realize that is the bullet remains in the block, which is inelastic. Okay. Part three is what do we need to know? Uh, what, or what we need to know will be V naught equals question. Okay. Uh, step four is make a diagram. So uh, let's make that diagram. So we have a little bullet. And we have a big, this is big M over here. This is little M. Right? This is traveling at speed of an unknown speed, V naught. This is all initial. And then at final, what happens is um, the block and the bullet are traveling together, m, little m, are traveling together at some v final, and then come to a stop after, so over here v is equal to zero, come to a stop after distance d. Okay, and that is due to friction. That's our diagram. Part five is looking at the formula sheet here. Okay, so we can look at the formula sheet and we need to find the reason, I'm trying to get this into your head, right? So we need to find something in a formula sheet that deals with V naught, but also deals with momentum and energy, uh, momentum, impulse, all that sort of thing, right? Because that's what where unit we're in right now. But also you can see that with masses and collisions, they're almost, they're always momentum questions. So we have our momentum over here. We have impulse over here. Do any of these have V naught? No. This one, kind of, but not really. What you have to realize now is we have to use the conservation of momentum. Okay? In any collision, inelastic or not, inelastic elastic collision, in any collision, momentum initial is equal to momentum final. Energies is not always the same, okay? Energies can change. If it's an elastic collision, ener kinetic energies are equal. If it's inelastic, they are not equal, all right? So we have an inelastic, which means that only the momentums are equal. Nothing to do with energies, okay? So why does this matter? Well, what we can do is all initial, momentum equals all final so let's let's do that right that's just uh that's just theoretical understanding but let's actually list that out right so if we go over to our initial condition over here right in our initial condition we have m little m traveling at vo plus big m traveling at speed of zero right and this is going to be equal to, if we look at our final condition over here, this will be equal to the combined mass traveling at some V final. And now why is it the combined mass and not each individual mass? Is that it says in our question, um, 
remains in the block after the collision, which means they're traveling at the same speed, which means you have to do this combined mass thing, okay? So this is the conservation of momentum. We are trying to find this VO over here. That is our question mark, right? Do we have mass? Yes, right? Do we have this? This term cancels out, right? That term completely cancels out because it's m times zero. Do we have velocity final? No, we don't have velocity final. But given the parameters of the final state, we can calculate what that velocity final is, okay? Now, it's gonna be a little bit confusing, so I need you to stick with me here, okay? So everything, I'm gonna highlight this in a new color. Everything in this green over here is conservation of momentum, okay? The only thing we do not have is this velocity final. So now we're gonna go over here to calculate out that velocity final. Remember, calculating velocity final is not what our answer is. We're trying to find velocity initial. That's also why I have you guys write it down so you never forget, okay? Anyway, let's start those calculations, right? We know that friction is the one causing the stop, right? So friction, is a force, right, cause a stop. And so if we look at our kinematic equations, right, we have this one kinematic equation. I can pull it from your formula sheet. And this is why it's so good to have everything memorized, right? Uh, where's it at? That. That formula right there, okay? So that formula is velocity final squared it's equal to velocity initial squared um tell you what yeah 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 okay I, and you'll see I'll, I'll explain this and i want this to get in your head and i don't want you to get too confused um delta x okay so our velocity final here this velocity final uh, and this is why i was uh, a little apprehensive right this green velocity final is not the same as um, this purple or pink velocity final over here, okay? This green one is the initial, like, the, the final velocity of this entire system. This velocity initial is the velocity final of the system. Does that make sense? So it's, it's confusing because if you're looking at a momentum standpoint, your initial condition is right here, your final condition is right here. But if we're looking at just this final in isolation right here, our velocity initial is actually equal to this VF right here. And then our velocity final will be equal to zero. And if that's a little bit confusing, what you can do is immediately realize, okay, this is going to a stop, so that's zero. And then the only other velocity we have is this velocity final. Okay, so I'm going to write this as velocity final um, one, velocity final one, and this will be velocity final two, VF two, the second final, like when we go from here to this point over here, that's equal to zero, velocity final one is equal to velocity initial. And if that doesn't make sense, please come find me, I can help you. Anyway. Um, if we write out our formula, zero, this entire term goes to zero because you end at a stop. Velocity final squared minus two. Our acceleration, we don't know yet, but we know our distance is d, right? Because that's given to us in the question. So again, what do we not know? Well, we don't know what this a is. So let's do some calculations for a, right? If we do a free body diagram, we get force gravity, force normal, and then we get force friction opposing the motion, right? These two will completely cancel out each other. So essentially what our net force is, one sec, force net is equal to force friction, right? Mass times acceleration is equal to force friction. See where I'm getting at? Force friction, always, this is uh, something you have to learn from your Newton's laws. Force friction is always force, friction is always force normal times mu k. And they told us our kinetic is just going to be mu. So force friction is equal to 
mass times gravity, because that's what force normal is, times mu. We don't have to define mu k because in our question, they didn't specify mu k versus mu s, so we only use standard mu, okay? Now this is a lot, right? But what then we can then do is put that into there. So mass times acceleration is equal to mass times gravity times mu, okay? Mass, mass cancel, acceleration is equal to gravity times mu. Now what we can then do is plug all that in over there. Um, velocity zero equals velocity final one squared minus two times gravity times mu times distance. We're gonna add this entire term over to the other side and get velocity final one squared is equal to two g mu d, okay? Then we do velocity final, one is equal to the square root of two g mu d. Are we done? No, folks, this is why I have you write down this. We're trying to find velocity initial. All we did right now is find that velocity final. That velocity final being this velocity final one right here, okay? Now what we can do is finally go back to our original equation and continue on mv naught plus zero is equal to m, little m plus big M times, what do we get for our velocity final? Square root of two g mu d. Square root of two g mu d, okay? Now we can simplify a little bit, right? v naught, all we're doing is dividing both sides by m. v naught is equal to little m plus big M times the square root of 2G mu D all over little m. This is your final answer here. I'll do that in pink because that's what I had that written out as, right? This is your final answer for the question. This is what you would put in right here, okay? Also, it's gonna be a little confusing. If you click into this box right here, over here on this right-hand side, it'll have like a bunch of symbols that you can use. Um, you're going to have to find it and just find the mu when you need to use this mu. You cannot use a u. It has to be Greek symbol mu. Okay? So now, this question was a lot. I know it was a lot, right? But let's break it down into its basic steps, right? The first thing that we did was write out what we know. Then we write out what we needed to know. Then we do a diagram, okay? That all should make relative sense, okay? Then what we did is what do we need to know? We need to know velocity initial. Velocity initial needs to be pulled from a formula. Well, none of our formulas had a velocity initial. What we do remember is that momentum's initial is equal to momentum final. Okay, cool. From momentum initial is equal to momentum final, we are able to get this formula. But we had two missing terms. We had both momentum initial, sorry, velocity initial and velocity final as unknown. But we know that we cannot solve for this velocity initial because that's what the question is asking us. So clearly there needs to be some way for us to find this velocity final. So then what we do is we look at just the final state in isolation and then use our kinematics and our Newton's forces laws to then use those formulas to find what this velocity is equal to. Once we're able to find what this velocity is equal to, we can plug that back in and find this. Jumping over to here, we know the block starts with velocity final one and it ends at zero. So if you want to jump straight into this step, you totally can. A, we don't know, but we do know x, okay? So anytime you get to something you don't know, see if you can calculate it, right? We got to here, we realized that we have two things we don't know, so we calculated vf. We're over here, we're calculating vf, we realize, oh, we don't have a. So let's calculate a. So then we did all these Newton's laws to then calculate a. Once we did that, we were able to find vf. No other extra terms came up, so that's good. Then we can take this vf, go over here. Is there anything else that we didn't know over here? No. So then we can solve our final problem. So, yes, you just knowing how to follow my steps is one thing, but I need you guys to understand how I got to these steps and why I'm doing what I'm doing. I realized we didn't have a formula, so I used a concept. Use that concept to give us a formula. From the formula, realized we had unknown. Found that unknown. Realized we had to find a different unknown. Found that one. And then, it, no matter how many steps it takes, as long as you can keep solving for unknowns, you keep going until you find something that's concrete, then work your way back all the steps. You can't just stop at finding A is equal to G times mu. You can't just stop at velocity final. You have to go all the way back to the beginning. 
Hopefully I didn't rant too much and it makes sense to you. Please find me if that didn't make sense.